Good day, this is Brad Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. Today we're going to dig into some historic situations, a decline and fall of empires, and this time it's the decline and fall of the American Empire, as pagan Gentile Christianity is watching and observing, and not knowing what to do. As sad as it sounds, this is to my American brothers and sisters. Please learn something from the Dutch, the Spanish, the Portuguese, the Belgian and the English brothers when we face our decline due to leadership failure. I might also add the Americans to the Americans, the Germans, because they were one of the most impacted nation in the mid 1950 folks it sounds scary but that was the year that I was born so 70 years ago and now again we see a decline we had a decline with the Italians with the Roman Empire who instituted in 325 AD the Roman Catholic Church which for the longest time seemed to exist for over a thousand years followed by the many nations among them the Spanish, Portuguese, and English countries, and in the late 40s, Belgium, Germany, and the Dutch, and now it's turn for the Americans. One Christian oxymoron exposed by restorative justice is the following. Looking at the pandemic and the virus while hundreds of thousands of people die, the virus is not the problem, we are the problem. For our decisions are causing our challenges. My concern is that a dose of reality is necessary to understand the current time and the political situation. And you say, who the heck are you? I am Brad Caleb and I had the privilege of living during this tumultuous time, going through it, visiting places, building up a business then experimenting with certain issues whereby faith, belief systems were challenged to the core and I finally came to the understanding that maybe if we want to open our eyes, maybe we were wronged and I say maybe, that means that you possibly have been a victim because we got set, sowed between the seat. See there wasn't gentlemen by the name of Jesua HaMessiah, many known by the name of Jesus, who proclaimed the way, the truth, and the light. Yet, in about 300 years after that, he opened that door. The enemy sowed so much wheat and created something that we are right now dealing with. We have a Gentile, pagan Gentile Christianity, whereby Satan has become the god of this world and of our belief system. Something that I hate to admit, it took me a long time to figure this out and to admit it, because I have been trained. School, Bible school, seminary, and all the way up to university. We hear the same, but is it true? Folks, this is a time to wake up and smell the roses. Let's check it out for ourselves. You might say, why Christian oxymoron exposed? An oxymoron is a 
contrast of words by restorative justice simplified. I wrote a book in 2019, The Suction Protocol for the Prodigal Son. And when I published it through Amazon, I realized that breaking it down to simple little steps would make it easier for people to understand that when you are a victim, to acknowledge that you have become a victim is very hard because that means weakness or it appears on the side of weakness. But the reality is when you accept that you have been hoodwinked, then at least you can open your eyes for reality. As I said already before, the virus is not the problem. It is a major problem because hundreds of thousands of people have died. So I'm not saying it is not a problem, but it is not the problem. What is causing the major problem are our decisions that we make, causing our challenges. And my concern is that a dose of reality is necessary to understand the current time and the political situation. You see, often empires differ from countries and the empire's definition is an aggregate of many states or territories under a supreme ruler or oligarch. It contrasts with a federation which is an extensive state voluntarily composed of self-governing nations and people. An empire is a massive political entity ruling over territories outside of its original borders. Through the centuries we have seen the decline of the Greek Empire, the Spanish, the Portuguese, the English, the French and the Dutch. And not to forget the Germans, with the loss and surrender of Indonesia in, with regards to Holland and other countries following. Derailed as a society? Does it benefit us to become a prodigal son or a daughter? Let's check this out and see if this is maybe a other solution. A solution that many preferred not to. But if you have nothing else to do, folks, what do you stand to lose? So the question is, in the parable, and you know what a parable is, it's a story to bring it simple, of a derailed society, does it benefit us to become the prodigal son or daughter? See the beauty of the story is the parable was shared by a great teacher, Jesua HaMashiach, as most of them know of him as Jesus. The prodigal son shared forgiveness. When he became a prodigal son, he said, Father, forgive me. And he was welcomed. He was not condemned. He was not told, oh, you stupid this and this and this and this and why did... He was just said, welcome, my son, let's have a party. You are home. And that is what is happening right now. The commotion going on is because of a lack of understanding. There is nothing wrong by becoming the prodigal son or daughter and acknowledging that father forgive me and the father will welcome you home but instead the body of christ is persisting in support of a mendacious imposter understanding that the word mendacious is being bold or glorious with loads of testosterone only a manliest of men can obtain this as their own accurate title the quickest way to get the objective mendacious is to wrestle two crocodiles or four bears and capture 20 roosters using your bare hands. Mendacious stands for untruthful, dishonest, unreliable, lying, inaccurate, misleading, false, deceitful, treacherous, two-faced and faithless. I can go on, but you get the meaning, I hope. Even though this will not stop the decline
and fall of the American empire, the soft landing for Americans due to the scandal of Trump sped up to less than seven years. In other words, I believe that what is happening right now, and I'm not a economist, I'm not a political person, but what is happening right now, the whole economy of the American empire is going down in less than seven years, folks. It is 2020. By 2030, if we are lucky, you will still know who America is. American empire, the way we know it, the super powers demise came quickly as Trump haggled his way into the presidency facilitated by the Cold War superpowers in 2016. The superpowers should not ignore the world stage without whose cooperation one cannot solve one world problems. For instance, during the Cold War, the United States could not intervene in world affairs without considering the USSR position and vice versa. Like a low-life scumbag, yes folks, I use that word for Mr. Trump, which I will explain is a slang for a person regarded as despicable. Or in vulgar terms, it means a used condom. Meanwhile, Trump continues abusing Americans, simultaneously breaking down barriers after a so-called victory while a confirmed loss by the electoral votes. Despite the aura of supremacy, most empires project with a look at their history, reminding us of their fragile organism. So flimsy is the green politics of power that when events went corrupt, domain breaks down with an unholy swiftness. It took roughly only one year for the Portugal to break down, several years for the Soviet Union, about seven years for France, about a decade for the Ottomans, Turkey, almost twice as long for Great Britain, yet less than 10 years counting Trump's era from 2006, a nonsensical show whereby the gladly sacrificed, he gladly sacrificed over 250,000 people and grew increasingly until they officially replaced him. Folks, what is that telling you? It's almost like he's prepared to sacrifice Americans for his Moloch. Moloch meaning Baal. You used to sacrifice people in order to stay powerful. Is that what you are facing right now? In the Americas? Folks, it is hard for them saying, but listen carefully. I realize that some individuals are uncomfortable with the mental difference of opinion and holding self-contradictory accepting wisdom in their head and denying any inconsistency, like President Trump. However, common sense might likely identify the Bush administration's rest invasion of Iraq as the start of the downfall, though Trump grave it the grand finale. But instead of the bloodshed marking the end of so many past empires, cities burning with massacred civilians, if we remember the stories of the Roman Empire, the American breakdown might as well be an economic collapse through cyber warfare. And I'm not the only one that figured this out, folks. I'm reading history and I'm studying history because it is important. We can learn from history. Though realize with the breakdown of the American global dominion, there will be painful reminders of what such a loss of power means for Americans in every walk of life. Half a dozen European nations discovered imperial failures, which will have a significant depressing influence on society. 
like the Netherlands experienced with losing Indonesia and the commotion it caused the South Moluccas and the Knil, the K-N-L-I-L, the Royal Netherlands Indian Army, and India meaning the Indonesian Army. The Dutch colonial army officially existed from 1814 to 1950. While the economic cools, economy cools off, the temperatures will rise, sparking severe domestic unrest as billionaires try to secure their capital and retreating in their tax-free havens, time permitting. Economic, educational and military dates indicate that the US global power negative trends will combine fast by 2021 and are likely to reach a precarious essence by 2030. In other words, 2030, an American century declared so gleefully at the start of World War II, will be in wrecks, fading away by 2025, its eighth decade and possibly history by 2030. Folks, I don't enjoy this, but this is history. And history has a tendency to repeat itself unless we take responsibility. And I'm not talking about Trump, I'm talking about everyone involved. In 2008, in the US National Intelligence Council stated that for the first time that America's global powers declined. In a time a report in global trends in 2025, the, and the council refers to the way from the west to the east. In other words, the transfer from power from the west to the east. This was predicted far in advance. We're talking 2008. And those people were talking about global trends in 2025. With no example in modern history, the most critical factor in the United States failure is relative strength, including the military. Though the American global supremacy deteriorated the moment they put their prima donna Trump in the leadership position, he became the driver under influence of power with no of importance stopping him and taking away the keys, driving society en bloc in the darkness, considering himself as the chosen one. And more terrible, more sad, as I can say, supported by the body of Christ. Many following him, which thus says the Lord, while the Lord did not speak. But folks, are we willing to accept reality? Are we willing to accept reality? In 2020, with China deemed the second largest economy and the Trump administration's failure is more concerned about his re-elections than his citizens dying at 2,000 plus a day. 2,000 people a day are dying in the United States of America. Folks, that means that at least four to five people, maybe 10 people per person, that is 20,000 people are affected. They are hurting. And that times 250,000. While Trump refuses to pay attention. Because it is more important that he ends up a winner and not a loser. One wonders if Trump is sacrificing his fellow Americans as turkeys on the chopping block for Moloch. Do you know who Moloch was? Moloch was Baal of Baal 
Moloch is a biblical name for a Canaanite god. Canaan, that was way, way back. We're talking about five, six thousand years ago. A god associated with child sacrifice, so fire or war. The name Moloch results in the second temple period of the proper name of a deity. In Canaanite God, with words became similarly associated with Moloch, including biblical Malcolm, great king, which refers to Ammonite gods. The catchphrase makes America great again was just a slogan for Trump and demoralizing the American populace. Chinese innovations are on a trajectory toward world leadership in applied science and military technology between 2020 and 2030, while America's current supply of brilliant scientists and engineers retires without adequate replacement by an ill-educated younger generation. The Pentagon throws in a military Hail Mary for a dying empire by launching a lethal triple canopy of aerospace robotics, representing Washington's last best hope of retaining world power, despite its warning, waning eco economic influence. China's global network of communication satellites, backed by the world's most powerful supercomputers, providing Beijing with an independent platform for the weaponization of space and a powerful communication system for missile or cyber strikes into every aspect of the globe. With half of the population for Trump re-election, with half of the population for Trump's re-election, Half of the population of the Americans, 71 million people. Americans fail to realize the decline like Whitehall or Cat Dorset. Before them, that was England and, um, and the France. When they faced decline, they didn't recognize that. Americans do not recognize a gradual, gentle and partial decline with Trump's eco-boosting prophecies of Christ's body. In other words, the body of Christ is feeding that ego by telling him he is the chosen one. He is the one anointed by God. But I tell you folks, those are false prophecies, mistaken, misguided people for whatever reason. 52 prophecies and counting for Trump are the chosen ones. He does not accept second place for his blindly and obstinately attachment to some greed of opinion and intolerance toward others in America. Recalling then Vice President Biden's statement will ridicule that we are destined to fulfill historian Paul Kennedy's prophecy that they were going to be a great nation that failed because they lost control of their economy and overextended. Now you say, where do you get that from? There are professors at the University of the United States of America they are the ones figuring this all out. I'm just reading and reinterpreting and asking myself what is happening. Trump made his prediction come through as the national debt increased by $5.2 trillion since Donald Trump took office, folks. These facts and figures, according to the Peter G. Peterson Foundation, a nonpartisan fiscal watchdog, $5.2 trillion. And Trump did so good. All he did, he borrowed out from his left pocket to give his right pocket. And he boosted the American economy. Folks, he fooled you. And he's billing you, billing you like through the nose. And you don't even realize it. He was failing to meet rent obligations to the, uh, due to the refusal of Mitch McConnell. Callous indifference, leaving ordinary Americans' welfare at risk. Instead of upholding hard-working Americans who fell on hard times, McConnell put in his time showboating Mr. President Trump to savor Trump's temper tantrums. Yes, folks, I tell you, this was not fun writing, and it has taken me several hours of reading material and understanding, am I saying and sharing the right things? Because it hurts. From an historical point, the question is not whether the United States will lose its unchallenged global power. On the contrary, just how swift and meandering the decline will be. 
Instead of waiting for the next National Intelligence Council futuristic policy implying four realistic situations, whether leaving with a bank or a whimper, the US global power could reach its end with the Trumper still in charge. When a car is about to collide, as the country allowed a power drunk driver Trump to continue driving under the influence with military misadventures and possibly World War III to please his buddies Putin and Bibi. The American decline and even collapse offer a window in an unrushing future unless we all repent. Yes folks, I am suggesting something that many of you have heard of. But when we repent as a society, we can stave off disaster. Repentance as a nation is not an unknown phenomenon. The meaning is regret, sorrow, remorse, penitence, atonement, shame, contrition. Yet seldom does it seem the powers to realize this is the only way out for their nation, where billionaires prefer to take out their capital and move it offshore instead of contributing to the national disaster plan and help out the suffering population. Due to the pandemic, whether designed in an American laboratory or not, the American leadership failed in technological innovations and declined. Folks. I hate to do this, but I've got a little bit more. The World Economic Forum ranked the United States at a mediocre 52nd rank among 139 nations in its university math and science quality in 2010. Nearly half of all graduate students in science and engineering are foreigners. And the ones Trump despised so much, people that are foreigners, him being a second generation immigrant. Yes, folks, Mr. Trump comes from an immigrant family like most of the Americans. Therefore, most will be heading home. So not staying in the States is likely to create a critical shortage of talented scientists. Other countries are no longer buying into the US knows best on economic policy, according to Kenneth S. Rogoff a former chief econo economist at the International Monetary Fund. Years of swelling deficits fed by never-ending warfare, the US dollars lost its unique status as the world's reserve currency. As the cost of imports soared due to Trump's childish behavior with bogus show strength against the East, unable to pay his swelling deficits by selling now devaluated treasury notes. A treasury note is a US government debt security with a fixed interest rate and maturity between 1 to 10 years. As Washington forced to slash its military budget, pulling its US forces back from hundreds of overseas bases might be too late. With a fading superpower, Oh, folks, I don't like doing this, but it is important. With a fading superpower, Trump incapable of paying government bills, including his own bills, corporate and personally, while holding on to his presidency, must be suffering from disillusion. Delus delusional, delusional, delusional. For instance, on February 9, 2018, Trump signed a bill suspending the debt ceiling until March 1, 2019. By February 2019, a total national debt was at $22 trillion. 
In July of 2019, Trump broke the debt ceiling until after the 2020 presidential election. Amid soaring prices, ever rising unemployment and a continuing decline in real wages, domestic divisions widen into violent clashes and divisive debates over remarkable irrelevant issues. He was riding a political tide of disappointment and misery when he, as a far-right patriot, captured the presidency with thundering rhetorics, demanding respect while in the process, shooting himself always in the foot with his Twitter. The way Trump deals with Georgia shows how Trump surpassed overnight an unexpected Hillary Clinton in 2016. He used all the garbage that he is putting out against Biden himself. And when you check this out, you will find maybe a lot more that he has done in order to win. He knows all the inroads of illegal winning, which he fails to prove with his henchman Giuliani. China set the pace in shaping the global future. Regardless of Trump's tantrums, the National Intelligence Council warned that by 2025, two countries, Russia and Iran, could emerge as energy kingpins. With China and India turn, with China and India turn out to become heavy energy consumers, while demands rise. Although the United States took a different path, doing too little to develop other resources, doubling its dependence on foreign oil imports. With weather shocks hitting the country, from floodings to burning miles and miles of bushes and property, the pandemic took its role by a president that off and failed to take ownership for the significant disasters as he fails to acknowledge the pandemic. His excuse? It could have been millions more instead of the only quarter of a million dead Americans attitude. As American power declines, empires often plunge into an ill-advised military misadventure, as Trump proves just this week accusing and manipulating the next president for stealing his presidency with about 7 million plus votes over Trump. If the United States of America allows him to start a war with Iran, his arrogance will drive the American empire into military misadventure until defeat becomes a debacle. History books are not Trump's strong points, I understand. But as we need to spell it out for those surrounding this emperor without clothes, you are naked, Mr. President. Let us check history for a moment. Athens, in Greece, sent 200 ships to be slaughtered in Sicily. In the rugged country, Spain, in 1921, a dying imperial dispatched 20,000 soldiers to be massacred by Berber guerrillas in Marco. The Netherlands and its formation of the KNIL CNIL would include both European and indigenous soldiers. In other words, the Indian soldiers, the people from Indonesia, a divided CNIL, half European soldiers in the other half from Indonesia. However, the ratio between European soldiers and indigenous soldiers went from one to one to one to three. There were not enough European volunteers to keep up with the recruitment of indigenous people sold. Do you hear this? Holland, it is shame. But this is the past. Following World War II, they used a reconstituted CNIL. In two massive military campaigns in 1947 and 1948 to re-establish Indonesian Dutch control. Folks, it is so sad. During this police action, accusations of war crimes were committed by the CNIL and its Ambonese auxiliaries. Dutch efforts to re-establish their colony failed and Netherlands recognition of Indonesian sovereignty came on December 27, 1949. On January 26, 1950, elements of the CNIL involved in an abortive group in Band Coop in Bandung in 1956, a failing British Empire destroyed its, prestigious, uh, its prestige by attacking Suez. With its growing resources, so those are other countries that did the same as the United States. In their failings, they failed to accept the fact that there is not a white man and a black man 
There is not a white man and an Indonesian. They are brothers and sisters fighting for survival. So with its growing resources, China is claiming a vast maritime arc from Korea to Indonesian long dominated by the US Navy. In other words, with its growing resources, China is claiming a vast maritime arc from Korea to Indonesia. It was long dominated by the US Navy. The Pentagon acknowledged that Beijing now holds the capacity and the capability to attack US aircraft carriers in the Western Pacific Ocean and target nuclear forces. While the president plays golf, as a temper tantrum former president refuses to acknowledge reality with drawing deeper into an alternative reality that the body of Christ and many others seem to support, for the Lord has spoken, and the truth should set in shortly. Since they replaced the terms, and this is the challenge, uh, the new world order with the reset during the pandemic. In other words, the new world order is no longer a big deal. It's going to call, be called the reset during the pandemic. G5 towers shoot out of nowhere in most countries while they ordered the population to stay home for the COVID-19. A pandemic to keep the people down, to keep the people home, allies worldwide realigning complicating matters economically, militarily and technologically. As often happened to the European empires after World War II, these opposing forces proved synergetic, combining in unexpected ways, creating crisis after crisis for which the Americas are remarkably unprepared as the wealth threatens to spin the economy into a sudden downward spiral consigning the country to a generation of economic misery. Congress and the President now in a gridlock with more Americans unemployed, more Americans unemployed and failing to meet the day-to-day -day obligations. My call to repent is now more than ever vital, folks. Please consider rep repentance. This is a difficult word. I had a difficulty with it when I had acknowledged that I repented. When I repented, I saw a change in my life. Please, I hope you realize that disasters can, disasters can turn around, but one needs to be willing to smell the roses. And since the majority still has a problem with wearing an N95 mask, I am concerned for the receding empire that is no more. If you cannot even put on a simple mask, folks, don't you think you have a major problem? I hope you will prove me wrong. For the supporters, and Murdoch's television so far has done only tearing down a society smeared with lawsuits of Trump personal, corporate, pedophile friendships and demoralizing treatment for of women supported by the body of Christ's decisive and divisive prophecies, confirming the Christian oxymoron again, while the decline and the fall of the American empire as pagan Gentile Christianity takes place. This is restorative justice, PMS versus PMS. The PMS one stands for the godly one, physical, mental and spiritual. The one that is right now that you're facing under Mr. Trump is the one that's political, monetary and spirituality. These folks don't go together. We have to repent and become the prodigal sons and daughters because then we are welcomed in God's arms and he can open the door to see us through this product, pro predicament. So my recommendation is tough times never last. But tough people, they do. God bless you. Bye for now.